What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Old Drunken Geek, again. And today, I'm going to give you guys my top 10 MCU movies. So stay tuned. Today, I'm going to give you guys my top 10 favorite MCU movies. This does not include the Spider-Man movies, except for Homecoming, um, you know, the Sam Raimi ones, any of the X-Men movies, Blade, none of that. Straight up MCU. And um, I don't want to hear no bullshit in the fucking comments about, you know, why did you put da 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 Kill all that. This is my list, my personal favorite movies. Y'all don't gotta agree, okay? So, without further ado, let's get it rolling. My number 10 is Iron Man, the original Iron Man. This is the stencil for what came to be other standalone uh, Marvel movies, what a lot of the formula basically for what a lot of the other movies ended up becoming, such as Ant-Man, um, Doctor Strange, and um, you can even say like Thor a little bit and like Captain America a little bit, but not as much with those two. The reason I picked this one as my number 10 is because uh, it just hit that formula, not only the first time, but it hit that formula the best. It had the best balance in comedy, in, you know, um, in action, in stakes for the character. Um, you know, it, it showed the beginning, middle, and end of a story. Even though the end is a little bit weak and the villain is a little bit weak, it still gave us basically the birth of the MCU and it gets extra cool points for that in my book. The first time I saw this movie, it was like, whoa, they did it. They did the fucking thing, man. They had the suit and it looked realistic. It looked like it could be in our world. And, um, you know, what more could you want than that? It was great. It was awesome. And that's my number 10. Number nine is Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I love this Spider-Man movie. Uh, I did not love it as much as the first two Sam Raimi films. Obviously better than any of the amazing ones, in my opinion. And better than Spider-Man 3, obviously, because, you know, any episode of Spider-Man show in the 90s is better than fucking Spider-Man 3. Moving on, you know, we all love Spider-Man and, you know, the arc he goes through. The fact that it's in this world that's already connected to other things and the fact that he was introduced in Civil War does deter a little bit, but by this time, we already knew what we were getting. We already knew the story behind Spider-Man. We saw it twice already. We didn't need any more explanation. So, as a standalone, it was good because you never really lost, even though it was connected to other movies. Um, where I do fault this movie at is that it did not give me scientist Peter Parker. Um, gave me a really cool Spider-Man, and in his mannerisms and stuff, uh, Tom Holland really hit the, you know, hit the mark as far as Peter Parker, but as far as him not be, not really making his own tech and kind of depending on Tony Stark tech, that kind of like bothered me a little bit. But either way, it's still a good movie. And uh, yeah, it takes number nine. My number eight is Captain America, the first Avenger. Um, of the first uh, phase of MCU movies, this one was my favorite except for Avengers, which will be later on in the list. But uh, of the standalone movies, this one was my favorite. I really like Chris Evans' portrayal of a, a very meek, very humble um, Steve Rogers. Uh, I also like that uh, they really told the comic book backstory as corny as it may sound. He was a little skinny kid and they pulled off the skinny part um, with that CG or whatever the fuck they used uh, to make him look super small and super skinny. Furthermore than that, you go on the adventure and it's a period piece, which I really like. A lot of people complain about the hopping, like the jumping, ah, it was too much, a little too whatever. Uh, people complain about the Red Skull a lot, I've heard. Um, I personally like the Red Skull. I had no problem with the action. My thing with a lot of these uh, movies that came out later, like uh, Ant-Man, Thor Ragnarok, uh, Doctor Strange, the visuals were dazzling, but I judge it more on the story than the visuals. Personally, that's just a personal thing. And to me, this one had a tighter story than the other ones. Um, like I said, in number 10, uh, Iron Man was a stencil for a lot of these other movies, but like when they copied them, maybe they didn't hit everything the way they should have. And um, this one, I felt like it felt different enough from Iron Man where it didn't even feel like that formula, even though it had some of those aspects. So that's why that this is my number eight. Number seven is uh, a movie that is very underrated. It just came out last year, 2017, but um, it's still very underrated, man. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume Dose. 
I do understand that this movie did it excessively with the comedy and, you know, a little too corny, leaning too much into the comedy aspect. And a lot of times it seems like the plot just kind of moved too fast. But to me, the stakes and the relationship between Peter and his father and Gamora and Nebula make up for it more than enough. Um, even Drax, that there's, you know, they say, you know, he had too many comedic moments. It was a little forced. It did feel like that at moments. But even in the moment when he's looking at the sunset and, um, what's her name, Mantis, comes out and talks to him a little bit and he talks about his family and his daughters. Yeah, it's sandwiched in between jokes, but he does have just a little bit of moment where um, Batista's acting comes through and you do see that these characters are not off brand in a way. Like, they're not off character at any moment. They're still the same characters. Now they're going through this adventure. And by the end of the movie, I was so satisfied and I've watched this movie like six, seven times by now. Something about its rewatchability has placed it where it is on my list. My number six is Black Pantera. Black Panther. Uh, <laughs> I really, really dug this movie. Fucking, um, it only came out this year and I've only seen it the one time. Fucking should have used my movie pass, bro. Now you can't watch two movies. Fuck movie pass. I'll still take that sponsorship though. Uh, like I was saying before I went on that little rant. Um, Black Panther only came out this year and it's really, really good. I like the world of Wakanda and the geek in me and the sci-fi lover in me loves the tech so much in, I mean, not to the amount that I love Star Wars, but it's that same kind of love for the tactile feel of the world that they painted. As far as their technology and their vehicles and stuff like that. Also, I really like the villain and like, we can talk a million years about Killmonger. Fucking, come on, what's there to say? Uh, he's... Probably one of the first really truly fleshed out villains, except for Loki in the MCU, actually since Loki in the MCU. So all that adds up to number six on my list. Number five is a movie I just saw twice. Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War. And when I saw this movie, I was thinking it'd be my number two. Then I was like thinking about it and it dropped down to my number three. And it slid all the way down to my number five. I know in my reviews, I said it cracked the top five. Well, at this point, it just cracked it because it is my number five. There are some narrative problems with this movie and the fact that you need to watch all the other movies. Another movie that might feel a little bit like that is uh, Captain America Civil War. But uh, with that one, you can at least follow along. You're like, okay, I'm a little lost. But then by the first third of the movie, you're pretty much caught up and you can move on. With this movie, like I said, it was an event and it was strictly for the fans. And, you know, the movie itself is a little bit harmed by the fact that it is an event. So, you know, the action speaks for itself. It's still high on my list, you know, number five. It's still pretty good, better than a lot of other movies, but still as a whole complete meal where I can just sit down and munch on it and digest it and secrete it, it's still only number five. It wasn't a whole meal. It's not like the risotto, I'm not completely full. So, with number three and four, uh, they kind of keep changing back and forth in my list. As long as these movies, two movies have been out, I have not been able to decide which one I like better. So, I'm just going to mention them off together. It is Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain America Winter Soldier. Guardians, for one, was a space opera, and that's something we had never seen in the MCU. We had seen some with Thor, you know, some space... Um, intergalactic aspects, but not that much. This is the first time we full on went out there. And this is what, in my opinion, let Marvel know that we could really, really get into the crazy stuff. Besides that, the adventure itself and the characters are so likable. And the fact that since this is kind of, in, at that moment when it came out, was a little bit divorced from the MCU a little bit, like just a little bit, like it's in its own separate little thing. It allowed them to be much more comedic and have a comedic tone. It had its own specific tone its own specific look. And um, yeah, and it, the characters were more than amazing. It was a misfit team and they came together. It was an amazing movie and that's why it's my number three or four. Moving on to my other three or four, it's a movie that couldn't be any more different than um, Guardians, which is Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier was so cool. It was a spy thriller. It was so different. This is the thing that MCU's kept doing. It's just making their movies different in the same world. And it feels sometimes like it's in the same vein as some things, but making them different enough to where you feel like you're watching something else and not just an episode and a show that you watch 
three times a year. You know, um, this one had an action. He had the most ass-kicking fucking Captain America, arguable, in any movie. Um, just, come on, man. That scene where he just landed on the boat, just wrecked everybody. Can't say much more than that. Even his costume was a little bit more subdued compared to the other movies he's been in. You know, the Spur Star Spangled Banner. This one, he had the cool blue costume. Um, the whole spy thing, like I said about that. Uh, Nick Fury gets a little bit of development. You get to do a lot of things straight from the comic, and it doesn't seem like a comic book movie at the same time. That's why this one with Guardians is my 3-4 pick. My number two pick is Avengers, the original Avengers, Avengers 1. Um, I love this movie because to me, it was perfectly crafted, man. Everything from the introduction of the characters, everybody get their own little short introduction, um, to keeping those characters, those characters to the end of the movie, little details. Like for example, Black Widow, she's a spy and that's part of her character and that's her power. She gets the information she needs out of Loki. But then later on in the movie, it's referenced that it did affect her in a way too. Um, it's kind of a way to paint her in a three dimensional light, you know, um, or Captain America with that line, I could do this all day, which is referenced to the first Captain America movie. And he has said that a couple of times since. The fact that little details, man, like, when there was this big whale ship that explodes and Captain America kind of covers uh, Black Widow, like, you know, like a gentleman from the 40s would, like, hey, lady. But at the same time, still had a lot of respect for her. Um, Black Widow's uh, capability to shut down the portal. Hawkeye, you know, they say, oh, they underplayed him. Not really. He was helping them wreck um, the Avengers when he had his mind wipe. And then when he came back, he was calling all the shots from the top of the building. I thought it was super cool. Everybody had character moments, the action was on point. They were able to tell a story of them getting together. It wasn't, oh, they're together, now they're gonna go fight people, like, you know, certain Justice League movies that we've seen. It was not that, it was the movie of them getting together. Um, Coulson's death, um, you know, the cards, Nick Fury, everything about this movie was so tight, and the comedy was organic. I mean, what else can I say, man? This is this was a dream come true. When I, when I saw this, I felt kind of sad when I saw this movie for the first time. Because I'm like, so all MCU movies are just going to keep getting better and better and better? It like blew my mind. But then they didn't. This is still at the top of my list, but not my number one yet. All right, so my number uno pick for my favorite MCU movie is Captain America Civil War. This is a movie, like I said earlier, it does build on all the other movies that came before it. But at the same time, if you watch it standalone, if you were to watch it as a standalone, you can still follow enough to where it's a cohesive, coherent movie. I love the arc that uh, Steve Rogers gets to, man. This is, you know, the arc of him being frozen, then Winter Soldier, him embracing the present, and now this is like the future. This is the future going forward in the MCU. And for his story, it's a nice book end, in my opinion. Um, he's not gonna do something just because the government's telling him to do it. He's still, he's still the same character in a way that he was back when he first showed up. It's right is still right. And um, you know, he's still that little kid from Brooklyn, and I love that. Tony Stark also is basically a co-character. He's almost like the main character in this movie too. And um, you know, you see his progression as a character. The action, what can I say? That airport scene was fucking beautiful. It was fucking, it was just comic book porn at that point. Not actually, comic book porn is something else. Don't look at my search tabs. Hentai? All right. No, not hentai. Some kind of freak. I mean, comic book porn, man. Scarlet Witch, She-Hulk, Supergirl. Yeah, but even moving forward past that airport scene, um, there was still more movie to be had. That wasn't like, all right, last, last superhero battle, cool, everybody go home. It still had more story to tell um, with Tony and Cap and, you know, and Bucky with the fact that, you know, Bucky killed his parents or what have you. So, you know, it still had more story to tell there. It's still kind of like a dessert at the end of your meal. And it was just cool, man. It was beautiful and it left the Avengers broken for further movies for them to come back, which we know what happens later on if you're a fan. But yeah, that's my list for my favorite top 10 MCU movies. This list might change as new movies come out. I guess Ant-Man and the Wasp might take number one, who knows? Or possibly the next Infinity War movie, Infinity War 2, Avengers 4, whatever they're gonna call it, Infinity Gauntlet.
And if you like this video, you can drop a like, share, comment, Yo, hold subscribe. Up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, my guy. We're just calling him to the office. We gotta go in. Office? Yeah, man. I think Thanos was developed better than Killmonger. Way better. Nah, way better. Yeah, they're around. Way better. They're around the same, bro. Killmonger. No. 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 Thanos was developed way, way better, better than Killmonger. Nah, man. Yes. That whole scene in the beginning of Black Panther. Because it, it it sets the setting for for Killmonger. Dude. It works, but like to me, it's like with Killmonger, you know, we're sympathetic with what, what was going on with him. But at the end, he's being an asshole. Like, it's still part of his Is strategy. he? Yes. He is. If Thanos is not being an asshole? Because at the end of the movie, you walk out thinking, like, is Thanos really a bad guy? Because he's doing shit to bring... He's doing shit to bring balance to the universe, but he's doing stuff that might seem bad for some people, but he has an ultimately good means in this movie. Yeah. Really? Really? So why didn't he snap his fingers and change reality so there's enough food for everybody and there always will be? He's fucked up. He's a mad titan. Oh, I disagree, I man. He was better developed than Killmonger. I'm sorry. Killmonger had a, a point. You know, black people have been oppressed for how fucking long? Like, pretty much. And he was just going to free them and start his own kingdom. To me, the main character of Infinity War was Thanos. And he was developed. Like, he was. Yeah, and he was developed so fucking properly. Well, Killmonger, you just get a few scenes here and there and, like, a little bit of, like, background. Which is nah. Which, which is still good. I'm, I, like, he's one of the best ones, but Thanos is better. I still Thanos disagree. Is way better I still Thanos. disagree. No. All right, you gonna, you can put that at the end of the video. I think. <laughs> no, sure. Because I like that whole discussion. Everybody got in on it.